protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com The surprise resignation of General Flynn is actually part of an ongoing effort of, by the military industrial complex to sabotage Trump and reassert control over foreign policy. Paul Joseph Watson has the story. Now, General Flynn was backed into a corner after it was revealed that he had a phone conversation with a Russian ambassador back in December. Establishment neocons and neolibs from both parties could seize upon this to validate this uh, narrative that the Russians hacked the election to help Trump and to defeat Hillary. Clinton. And f you could say that Flynn was merely exercising due diligence because he was the incoming national security advisor. He was communicating with a very prominent foreign official. Uh, but there was a politicized intelligence community as well as a, a, a anti-Trump press who very much so wanted Flynn's head on a stick. They wanted him out from the very beginning. So now they're running rampant saying that he violated the Logan Act, which is totally ironic because we've been saying here at InfoWars for years that many of many of the people in the establishments, uh, politicians have been violating the Logan Act for years by meeting secretly at the Bilderberg meetings and uh, without a whimper, of course, of dissent from the press. Now, what Watson goes on to explain how when Democrats meet with Russian officials, it's treated as no big deal. Prime example, in 1984, Senator Ted Kennedy approached the Soviet government about aid in defeating Ronald Reagan's reelection. He offered them diplomatic arms and control concessions if they would help install Walter Mondale in the White House. No big deal. He got a pass. The real reason for Flynn being forced out is that he represents a direct threat to the military industrial complex that was swept away and swept to the side by Trump's victory. And coming out of Fox News, they're saying Trump and GOP lawmakers are actually more concerned with the potentially illegal leaks in the wake of Flynn's resignation. Donald Trump tweeted out, the real story here is why are there so many illegal leaks coming out of Washington? Will these leaks be happening as ideal on North Korea, et cetera? And of course they will, because Donald Trump, you were supposed to get in there and drain the swamp. Now you're going to have to clean house because you obviously have some rogue agents there on the inside. Now, Fox News first reported on Monday that the House Intelligence Committee chairman is wanting the FBI to conduct an assessment of these recent media leaks. And uh, they asked, Flynn actually asked in a Tuesday morning whether these leaks were targeted, coordinated, and possibly a violation of the law. He told Fox News, yes, yes, and yes. So what they're arguing is that the conversations that he had with this top Russian official was that it would breach diplomatic protocol, possibly violate the Logan Act. Uh, but what's, the, what's at issue here is that the intelligence community was actually capturing his phone calls with this Russian intelligence agencies, um, and they're supposed to protect the identity of any Americans that they're collecting phone calls from. So the House Intelligence Committee chair is saying if the press reports are right, someone made the decision to deliberately listen to General Flynn's phone ca calls, and it's unprecedented, unwarranted, and flat out wrong. And the Daily Caller is actually saying, indeed, the number of leakers cited in the reporting of Flynn's calls were substantial, nine current and former U.S. government officials provided this information to the Washington Post, which is really interesting as well, because as we've reported, the Washington Post has a $600 million contract with the CIA. Jeff Bezos announced that he was going to actually be building some sort of a cloud for them to communicate. So, of course, it's the, the Washington Post that's going to break the CIA's big story. And this is also what the conservative treehouse is reporting. They say anti-Trump intel black hats are responsible for fake Flynn controversy. Uh, they said all you ever needed to know about this rubber tire is, is the evidence following the CNN paragraph. They said the message was delivered by then acting Attorney General Sally Yates. Uh, she gone. Other top intelligence officials, including James Clapper and John Brennan, were in agreement that the White House should be alerted about these concerns. So, again, goes on, the Washington Post is the originating source of the controversy, the fiasco. The Washington Post is the official leak outlet for the political arm of the CIA, conservative treehouse, rounding that out very squarely. And, um, 
Also, coming out of the Free Beacon, former Ob Obama officials, loyalists, have been actually waging this secret campaign to oust Flynn. This abrupt resignation is actually culmination of a secret, months-long campaign by former Obama administration confidants to handicap Trump's national security apparatus and preserve the nuclear deal with Iran. This is according to multiple sources in and out of the White House. Uh, they talked directly to the Washington Free Beacon. They wanted to speak, obviously, anonymously, be just uh, not to jeopardize their, their position there in the White House. They say that Flynn was set to expose some details about this Iran deal that were previously hidden. And uh, so Obama officials and loyalists planted a series of stories to discredit Flynn and bolster this Iran deal. And I recall that we actually reported on this uh, a while back, that Obama was setting a lot of these traps, a lot of these landmines to stump Donald Trump, knowing that once Trump took office, he would be able to see behind the curtain of all of the secrecy within the most transparent administration ever, everything they were coming out telling the American people that this Iran deal was a great deal. and for whatever reason they backtracked on it, that was never revealed to the American people, and that's what Flynn, who has persistently been a thorn in the side of the Obama administration, particularly when it came to this Iran deal, he was always speaking out against it, and he was set to expose um, some of the details there. So uh, these, these uh, sources are telling the Free Beacon that the effort, which is said to include the former Obama administration advisor Ben Rhodes, uh, included a small task force of Obama loyalists who deluged media outlets with stories aimed at eroding Flynn's credibility. And one veteran national security advisor said it's undeniable that the campaign to discredit Flynn was well underway before Inauguration Day, with a very troublesome and politicized series of leaks designed to undermine him. The pattern reminds me of the lead-up to the Iran deal and probably features the same cast of characters. And they go on to say, you know, it just doesn't add up. Donald Trump's never really had an issue with uh, playing with the truth a little bit, uh, you know, or hiding certain things or covering up for people. So why all of a sudden would they just oust Flynn? It doesn't add up. That's their opinion, not mine. But another source who serves as a congressional advisor and was involved in the 2015 fight over the Iran deal said that the Obama administration feared Flynn would expose the secret agreements with Iran. Um, this would blow up their myth that it was a good deal that rolled back Iran. So in December, the Obama NSC started going to work with their favorite reporters, selectively leaking damaging and incomplete information about Flynn. After Trump was inaugurated, some of those people stayed in, some began working from the outside, and they cooperated to keep undermining Trump. So last night's resignation was their first major win, but unless the Trump people get serious about cleaning house, it won't be the last. So this is a lot of uh, different sources here talking about the fact that it's black hats, uh, a secret coup going on with the shadow government, that this has been going on pre-inauguration. Uh, Obama is surprisingly going to be one of the very few presidents that decides to stay in Washington, D.C. after he's out of office. You know, you, you'd think that you would just see him off in Hawaii playing golf forever and ever, but instead he decides to move to D.C. and build a huge wall around his new home. Very peculiar there. And some Russian insiders are fearful that the Washington establishment is actually going to attempt to assassinate Donald Trump. This is according to a magazine with deep ties to the globalist elite. Uh, it's buried deep within a foreign policy article about how the Kremlin is confused with how to respond to Trump's role as a revolutionary insurgent with a mission to dismantle America's old regime. From c conversations with Russian policymakers and experts, the article makes clear that power players in Moscow are concerned about Trump even being able to see out his first four years in office. The Kremlin fears that Trump may be ousted or even killed. And uh, they say that this is bound to unleash a virulent and bipartisan anti-Russian campaign in Washington. Now, foreign policy, here again with this reporting, this is uh, foreign policy. It's owned by the Washington Post company, uh, Graham Holdings Company, and it's headed up by C uh, CEO David Rothkopf, who's a top globalist and a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, a former managing director of Kissinger Associates. So foreign policy would know what's going on with these high-level um, players in Moscow. 
But it's very interesting to see kind of the changing of the tides because you have your establishment media people who are freaking out over the fact that Donald Trump and his team are able to control what is going on in the White House uh, press briefings room. They are used to having all of their establishment reporters in there able to ask the question. And so they've been putting out this narrative with Flynn all weekend, and they were really upset that when President Trump met with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau at a joint press conference on Monday, none of the reporters asked Donald Trump about Flynn. And they were pit, really <laughs> peeved about it. They actually went on to have several nightly news segments about um, these journalists. And they said, instead, you know, instead of asking about Flynn, which is the top story, according to them, they focused on important and presumably newsworthy issues like trade, immigration, uh, refugees, the economy, and national security. So think about that. If Sean Spicer or whomever else would have allowed one of these establishment people to ask a question, all they were going to ask was a question very biased about Flynn to help build up their own stories, rather than the stories that are actually very important to the American people that we never seem to get to because it's a conquer and divide, uh, divide and conquer strategy that we're seeing played out again and again. Hillary Clinton chimed in. She crawled out from under her rock and, and you know, one of her hiking trails that we've been spotting Bigfoot. Um, she put out her own conspiracy theory, saying that Mike Flynn was targeted over exposing Pizzagate. She retweeted. Uh, a tweet made by her former State Department senior advisor, Philip Rines, who tweeted a link to a Domino's job website claiming Flynn and his son had a pizza obsession. So then Clinton retweeted this, saying, you know, Philippe's got his own way of saying things, but he has a point about the real consequences of fake news. And of course, Hillary Clinton and her, her band of brethren were caught up in the whole Pizzagate scandal. Uh, but in order to stop this populist uprising with this fake news, which is what they're basically saying, in order to dismantle the new world order globally, they are working globally to control the fake news, whatever it is that they deem to be fake. So George Soros is actually funding Google to help stop populist Le Pen. They launched CrossCheck in France in order to censor pro-Le Pen news. So this was back in November uh, 2016. MarketWatch reported that George Soros's hedge fund invested in Alphabet Inc., which is the parent company of Google. And in February of this year, Google uh, News Lab announced CrossCheck, which is a new fake news project billed as a collaborative effort between journalists, newsrooms, and social media companies. It appears aimed at censorship so as to impede the chances of Le Pen to win the French presidential election. So we can see that this is something that George Soros has kind of been involved in behind the scenes, him and his NGOs worldwide. He's always kind of been uh, manipulating the masses in order to put the people in power that he would like or, you know, his globalist um, brethren would like. And so now they are using cross-check and other algorithms, other huge social media platforms to control the news. Uh, they say that they're going to start, this project would start by working with newsrooms across France to monitor news concerning the French election. Then they're going to collate all that information and then spread it out to the masses, including many French uh, press as well as BuzzFeed. Can't wait for that. Fake news. In case you haven't heard, InfoWars has become the most influential media outlet in America. We're making freedom go viral. And now we are proud to announce a new weapon in the epic battle against the globalists. InfoWars Prime, where you can watch live high definition feeds of the Alex Jones Show, plus exclusive insider videos from the InfoWars crew and behind the scenes action. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash app and download today.
today. InfoWars Prime is available right now for your iPhone or Android. You will have access to exclusive videos that you can't see anywhere else. And that means live coverage of events and breaking news on location as it happens. You can also take advantage of amazing deals from the InfoWars store that are only available for InfoWars Prime subscribers. That's InfoWars Prime at InfoWars.com forward slash app. If you can hear my voice, you are the resistance.